What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over a problem called Juka. Uh, so basically you're given, uh, so th there's this story where you have Claudia and Natalie has 10 apples together and then Claudia has two more apples than Natalie and you want to know how many apples each girl has, right? And then, um, yeah, and then the student tried to check if Juka wasn't accidental, like what Juka said about Claudia and Natalie. So then she gives them with bigger numbers. So now, now that we have, now what they're asking is that there's uh, 10 test cases given one after the other. You have to process them all. Each test case consists of two lines. The first line is how many apples the, both girl, the girls have together. And the second line so, shows how many more apples Claudia has. So yeah, you, both of them are positive integers. And now we have to output the number of apples belong, belonging to Claudia and the one belonging to Natalie. Okay, so that's basically the problem statement. And now let's actually let's actually look at the how to do this problem, and I'll explain. So let's just look back at the problem statement we were given. So each line contains two uh, two lines. First one is how many apples both of them have together. The second line shows how many more apples Claudia has. How many more apples Claudia has? Okay. So if we have um, Natalie and Claudia, so let's say Natalie has n. And then Claudia has uh, k, so our first line we're given is n plus k because we're given how many they both have. Right, the first line how many they both have together. The second line shows how many more apples Claudia has, so that's how many more apples Claudia has. So that's k minus n. Okay, so this is the first line, um, and then now we want to know how many each of them have, both of them positive. So if you want to find how much they each of them have, you just have to add these equations up. So these would cancel. So let's say, let's say our sum here was the first one was like uh, s, and this one's d, right? So then if you add up both of these equations, you get two k is going to equal s plus d, and then if you divide by two on both sides, you're going to say k is equal to s plus d over two, okay? And then um, if you plug it back in, you're going to get n is equal to s minus k. So we just plug this K back in. Okay, so that's basically the gist of the problem. You just have to print out both of these numbers. Um, the hard part about this problem is actually because the it's using big integers, right? So we're going to actually have to create a gigantic array of 100 digits and then carry the carry every single time something, something works or something doesn't work. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, let's just... Let's just go dive right into that. Okay, so the first thing we need is to know is that you, the, we have to try to solve uh, the sum of both of these numbers, s plus d, and then divide by 2, because that's that's the main gist of the problem, and then we have to subtract. So there's um, actually three operations we have to do. One is to add them together, so we have to add addition of big numbers, subtraction of big numbers, and also div division of big numbers. So if we're able to do all of those, then we're, we're good. Um, so let's go over how do you actually do division of big numbers. So let's say I have like a gigantic uh, number like seven, eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten plus, uh, the, not ten, uh, yeah, seven. I don't know this number plus, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what you basically have to do if if you assume each of these digits are like a gigantic array, so like each of these are an array. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go through every single value in this array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You're going to have to add them up. So um, if you're going to have to start from 0, um, it's actually better if you flip. Yeah, okay. So you're going to have to start from, you either have to start from the beginning or the end um, and then carry it. So uh, it might actually be better if we like reverse the digits so then... Now the zero can actually be at the zeroth place here. So then if we actually reverse the, the digits, the zeroth place would be do one zero this 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 place, right? So that started the zeroth place, ones place. So you would first add up the first two digits at each corresponding place, right? And then you have to carry the the one, carry the one. So uh, how you do this is you would add this up. So this would seven plus nine is sixteen. Right, and then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take this number, mod it by 10 to get the last 
digit of 16, right? So the six, and that'll be your one, that'll be where you place this number at. Then you have to take 16, so we have 16, right? You have to mod it by 10. So 16 mod by 10 gives you six. So that's gonna be the one where you place here. And then we have to do 16 divided by 10. So then we get um, one because it's the lowest bound and that'll give you your carry. So then you would have to put the carry up on top and then you would have to continue adding this. So nine plus one, 10. Once you have 10, you have to divide it by mod by 10, you get zero, right? And then you would have zero here and then you would divide it by 10 and you would continue doing this over and over again. So that's how you do uh, integer, big integer. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go over subtraction, which is kind of the same thing. You just have to borrow the borrow the one from the um, from the left hand side if it doesn't work out. So like, let's say I have, let's say I have like seven, eight minus, I don't know, 19, right? So 78 minus 19. Um, so what you would do is that if you're going to loop through these digits, let's actually make it one zero, yeah. So you would start here, and if if it's less than the other digit, you would actually add by 10. So you would take this one, add by 10, so it would be 18. And then you subtract 18 from nine and you get nine. Um, if it's too much, right, if it's like greater than 10, you have to mod it by 10, right? And that'll be your digit, so then you would do that. So that'll be nine, right? So then 18 minus nine, is it equal to nine? And that'll be the leftover, right? Now here you have seven, you have to, since we borrowed the one, we have to make seven to a six. So now seven becomes a six. And then you just subtract six minus one, which is five. Okay, so that's pretty much it, how you would do subtraction. You just have to keep borrowing from the left side if it's uh, too small, right? You would add 10 to your original digit and then subtract. And then if it's greater then you would, uh, you would have like a remainder, right? So then you would just, you know, mod by 10 to get your digit. But uh, yeah, so if it's greater, you would borrow one from the left side. Also, if let's say there was like, um, let's say this was not 78, but like nine, right? So then this would be 18 minus nine would be nine. So then you have six. So if there's nothing on the left side anymore, right? You just, uh, you just carry the rest over. So it'd just be 69. So yeah, so that's basically how you do subtraction. Okay, so now let's go over um, division. So next one is div division by two, and that's a little mo bit more complicated, but I'll see if I could go over that. Okay, so like if you're div dividing by two, let's say I have 38 here and I divide by two. So um, you would take the left digit here and divide it by two, and uh, you would need to get the remainder. So you'd have to take the left digit mod by two also to get the remainder. So then it would be um, one. So now to continue to the division, you'd actually have to take your remainder here and multiply by 10. So you'd one times 10. So then that'll give you 10. And then you have to take 10, you add 18, uh, add eight, so then you get 18, right? So that's that's basically carrying the eight down here. And then um, when that happens, then you take the leftover and then you uh, divide by two, and then that'll be nine. So then you subtract two times nine, 18, and you get zero. So yeah, that's pretty much it for division. Um, just, just make sure that uh, whenever you get a remainder, you you have to multiply by 10 and then add it, add the, the what's left over the next digit that's going that you're iterating from, right? So the next digit you have to add by 10, okay? Um, so there's another case where it's like, okay, so the other case is if there's absolutely no remainder. So like, let's say I do 18 divided by two. So if there's no remainder, right, um, you would you do, uh, let's say you divide by it, right? You'd uh, two times nine would become 18 and you get zero. So there's no remainder here. So then what you do is you actually just, uh, you just push back the this value divided by two, right? This original value divided by two, and you put that there. Um, if the current digit is less than two, you have to add a zero. So like, let's say I have like ten divided by two, um, and you have five, you need to push back a zero before it. So like, uh, so like here you would have to push back a zero before the five, and you have ten. That's just to make sure that you're actually getting all the digits down. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you do division by two. But yeah, you just push back a zero in front. I'm gonna explain the code now, and then yeah, we'll be on our way. All right, guys, I'm gonna explain the code real quick, and then I'm gonna head to bed. So they said they wanted ten test cases, so I looped from zero to ten, right? And I have a string k and n. So k represents what Claudia has, n represents what Natalie has, and I read both of them. Then I have to create vectors of integers represent each digit to store them. So I have digits of K and digits of N. Then I loop through the string of K and then I'm gonna add uh, every single character in the string 
uh, push back to the back into our array and then I'm going to convert every character into its equivalent digit form so that's what this does so then this stores it into the array then I'm going to do the same thing for n I go through every string in the uh, character in n convert it into its equivalent digit form and then I store it into the array dig n then I'm going to call sum to add k and n right because we remember we have to add k plus n and divide by two right that's the first value and then we have the second value is k minus that number so here we add I create a function called add and I'm going to show that later but basically I add k and n the digits of k plus the digits of n to get my sum and I return a sum array then I divide this sum array by two to get my div array and then basically I just print out every single digit in my div array then for afterwards you have to find the values how much it's uh, you have to take the digits of k and subtract by with the with the value you had previously right that's what we had to do like I showed you in the video so you subtract that and that's going to be your diff so I store that into a diff and then I loop through diff the diff array and then I just print out the diff array every single value in the diff so now let's go over the, each function so first of all we need to have the functions of add Add basically just adds all the digits of a and b and then returns a new array of a new array for the sums added, the digits added. So because I use pushback originally in the beginning, instead of reading in by zero to the end, I have to reverse the array because I added it uh, appending it to the end and that's not the right order. So I reverse it so that the zeroth value represents the one's digit. So I do that for both of them. And then what I do is that um, I need to find the minimum length of each of them because that's the, how much I actually have to loop to add. Like I don't need to continue adding afterwards because of that. And I have an array called answer and that's just going to store all the answers of the digits. And I need a carry because this carry, this variable called carry is going to represent every time I add something, I'm going to change, uh, if, it's, if the value is like greater than 10, I'm going to change, uh, change the carry and put that on top. So that's what that is for. Okay, so I loop through from zero to the length, the minimum length, right? I'm gonna add every single digit of A and B, each digit A and B, and then I'm gonna add by carry. So initially carry is zero, but we're gonna replace that after each iteration, okay? So this is gonna be our value, and that's the value that for we have for each one's digit. Um, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide by 10 to get our carry. So like if I have like, if I sum up like uh, 78 plus nine, right 8 plus 9 gets you 17 and um, 17 would be our value but I need to get the carry of the 1 right so what I do is I take 17 divided by 10 and that's going to give me the carry of the 1 so that's what this carry is for okay then I'm going to push back the the last uh, the ones place of the digit so back to 78 plus 9 right so the ones digits of 8 plus 9 is 17 so 17 has a value of one is the carry so that's scary right and then um the the actual digit that we're going to place is going to be the seven and that's if you take 17 and get the remainder when you um when you mod by 10 so when you mod by 10 the remainder is seven so that, that's the answer that we push back okay so this is the start when gets a little bit tricky so here's what's going to happen is if uh, we have leftovers so after when we're done with the leftovers, right? So like uh, if we have like 78 plus nine, right? We're gonna have a leftovers of, so back when we had, um, back when we had uh, 78 plus nine, so this eight plus nine is 17 and then we have one, so 87, right? Um, so the minimum length of both of these is one because there's only one digit of nine. So yeah, um, so what, what this second part here is that it's going to continue adding after we're past the length. So when we're past the length in this place, um, we're past the ones place already, right? There's no more digits for the second value of nine, right? So we still have to continue adding, even there's no more digits at this part, right? At this 10th place, there's no more digits here. So we still have to keep adding. So that's what this is for. So this is going to start from the length that we just finished off of, and it's going to continue adding. And uh, that's basically what it's doing. It's going to continue adding, and then it's going to, for each value, it's, we're going to 
uh, if we do the same thing, we add the carry, right? So in this case, it would just take the carry of one and plus seven. And yeah, so that's what it does. So it's gonna add the carry. Um, it'll divide by 10 if there's still more carries left over, right? So to get the more more carry and it'll push back the one's place of it. So like if in this case, if we had like, uh, I don't know, um, if this was like a nine, right? Let's say we had 98 plus nine. So let's say we had 98 plus nine. We have 17, right? We carry one. So in this case, um, we still have to continue adding one plus nine. So that's what it does, like plus one plus nine, and it gets you 10. And then if it's 10, you just have to append like the zero and then the one. So that's what that's the code is doing. It's gonna add the rest of it. Um, we do the same thing for the second part. If we have more left over for B, for B, so we do this exact same thing. We just loop through it and we add the carry and continue adding the carry and adding it to our answer array. Okay. So uh, that's what the, the both of those cases do. And uh, like this, the same case would do it if like B is greater. So that would be like nine plus 98. So in this case, the second, the second array is bigger, has a higher length, but you still have to keep adding, right? So you have nine plus eight, 17, carry the one, you still have to keep adding this side. One plus nine is 10. So that's what that's for. So that's what the B part is for. Um, here's when, gets a little bit more tricky. Like, let's say we have even more carries. So back to this part of one zero seven, uh, one plus nine gets you 10, right? So we have another carry of one. So that's gonna, we still have to pen the rest of that. So that's why we add that here. So if in that case here, when, while the carry is greater than zero, we're still gonna get the remainder, mod it by 10 to push it back. That gets the ones place. And then we divide by 10. So that's gonna keep doing it. Right, so that'll actually add the zero and then add the one after this carry is done. After that, I'm gonna reverse the array again because I pushed back. Pushback means you add it to the end. So that means our, when we did push back and add it to the end, we actually add it in a reverse order. So we have to reverse it again. So that's what this is for, okay? Now let's look at subtraction. Okay, so in subtraction, uh, you, I'm assuming that you, we already reversed X right? Because we did that in the top. So in th this case, only Y is out of order. So we just reverse Y. Um, here then we still have the answer, our answer array, and then we have our length. So in length is the length of the second, the second array that we're subtracting from. So here is subtracting Y from X. Okay. That's what this is doing. Okay. So what do we do here? Okay. Um, so we're going to loop through the length of uh, the second value because we're subtracting, uh, y from x. So in this case, it would be like, well, let's 78 divided by 78 minus nine. So let's say you had 78 minus nine. So, and that's what this is case of doing. Well, we're going to loop through only up to the, the length of nine. So that's one. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Cause there's no need to keep looping the rest. Right. Okay. So here, what we do is that, um, we're going to compare the ones digit with the ones digit of second place. So if it's less than, so in this case, uh, this one's digit of eight is less than nine. So we need to borrow from the left side. So that's what this is doing. It's going to borrow from the left side. So it's going to subtract from the left. Um, this is I plus one. So in our case, it's going to be, or so how we stored it, we did it to the right. We plus one to right. But, um, yeah, it's actually, we're actually looking at the array index like this. So this is the zeroth place, this is the ones place, and this is the two second place, right? Based on how we stored it. So yeah, here it would actually take uh, eight. It would take the zeroth plus one, which is the first place, and it would borrow one. So it's gonna subtract one from this. So it would be six, right? So that's what that's doing. And then we have to push back. So this part, uh, we're gonna add 10 plus the original number. So here it's gonna take 10 plus eight gets you 18, and then you could subtract it. So that's what it does here. 10 plus eight gets you 18, and then you subtract it from from nine, so that will give you nine. And uh, yeah, that's what it does. It pushes that back, and then it continues going forward. Um, if it's not less than it, then we don't have to borrow, so then we just push back the original value of the digits minus X minus Y. So in this case, let's say we had, at this point we have six and this is a zero, right? Um, six is greater than zero. So we just have to subtract it. We don't have to borrow from the left side. So let's just get, get you that. So it gets you 69. So that's this part. 
Okay. Okay. Um, then we have to append the rest of the dig digits of the X. And that's, that's what I'm doing here. Um, so like in this case, remember we had like 78 minus nine, right? Uh, if we go back, we have 78 minus nine, uh, 18, six, right? 18 minus nine is nine. So here, uh, we still have to continue subtracting even though we're past the length of nine, right? Length of nine was, is just one digit. So we still have to subtract the rest of the digits. So that this makes sure that this part just makes sure that you're subtracting the rest of the digits. So it'd be six minus zero because it's zero, zero, right? So that's what this is for. Um, if the value is less than zero, that means you have to borrow again from the left side. So you have to borrow another one. So you do subtract uh, I plus one minus minus, and then you have to add by 10, add by 10 by your current value in order to borrow, right? Uh, so if in case you have like zero or something. So yeah, that's what this is for. Um, and then you continue adding it, add the rest. Um, yeah. And then we reverse our answer because we were, we were pushing back to the end and that's not actually how you want it to push back. You just want, uh, we've been pushing it to the end. So we have to reverse the numbers in order to get it to the right order again. Okay. Here, this part, what we're doing is that we're actually just, um, find the first occurrence that's not zero and then loop through it and add the rest of the values. So this is what, um, what this code is doing is that let's say we had like, I don't know, uh, 10 minus five, right here. You 10 minus five is five. And then we just, we're done here. Right. Uh, but it would actually store a zero here. So what this code is doing is it's going to remove the starting zeros. So what this code is doing is that we're going to go through the, uh, array again, the answer of array and find the first occurrence that is not zero. So that's what this while loop is doing. This while loop is going to find the first occurrence that's not zero. So in this case, it would be five. And then what this is doing is it's going to push back to a new array called R and it's going to push all the ones that are not zero. So that'll push back uh, five to our answer array and then we return it. So this actually get removes all the zeros prior to it. So if we had like I don't know this many zeros, it would remove all of these and your answer is just going to be five. So that's what, that's what this code is doing. It's like for loop, uh, find the first currency that's not zero. And then it's going to go through the end and you're going to push back every single value. Okay. So now we're going to do divi divide by two. It's a bit little tricky. Um, this is just dividing the array by two, every digit by two. So what is this doing? Okay. So we have answer of array our answer array, and then we have value. Okay. Um, so in this case, we're going to go through all the digit, uh, digits here. And what we're going to do is that, uh, this value actually represents the remainder. Um, yeah, it represents the remainder. So what is, uh, let's say we had an example of, I don't know, one, seven, six, uh, no one, seven, three. Okay. So when you divide by two, uh, normally you would do a two times eight, which is you 16 and you subtract it, right? And you get 13, two times six goes into six, 13, twice, 12, uh, 12, and you have remainder one. So what this is doing is that we're going to loop through all the, the uh, digits of one, seven, three. Um, if there's a remainder, then we do that thing at first row, the value of remainder is zero. So we don't do anything first. So what this is doing is that, um, if the current digit is less than two, we're actually just going to add the remainder of uh, the remainder by the current digit and then we add a zero. So that's going to do like uh, here, it's going to add a zero here and then we have a remainder equal one. Okay. That's what it's doing, right? We add a zero to here and then we're going to have a remainder one because uh, that, that's what it's doing. And then um, while it goes to the second time, which is a uh, seven, now we have remainder one, right? So now seven is not less than two. So it skips here. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the remainder of seven, uh, of seven divided by two, right? So seven divided by two is going to give you seven divided by two is going to give you uh, three. Um, hold up. Something's not right. Yeah. 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 Seven divided by two is going to give you remainder one. 
it's gonna be remainder one, right? Seven divided to three, six, one. So that's gonna be your last value on the bottom. So that's gonna be your value here. So that's your remainder one. So you have to, this is this is the remainder of one of I have doing seven divided by two, right? So I'll give you, that's, that gives you this one. And then what it does is it's gonna push back the remainder of 17 divided, uh, seven divided by two. So that's seven divided by two. Three, so that gives you uh, seven divided two, it gives you three, and that's going to push down the remainder of this. That's what it does. Okay, and then it continues doing that over and over again until you've gotten your answer of your quotient, zero eight six, right? Okay. Um, at this point, then we're also we're gonna remove all the uh, corresponding zeros in the beginning. So that's what this is doing. So we're gonna start from the beginning of our um, while it's equal to zero, we're going to uh, in increment our index of i, and then for the rest, we're going to push back the ones that are not zero. So this finds the first occurrence of zero, so then it finds uh, n n first non-occurrence of zero, it finds eight, and it's going to push back all the values after eight, so it gets you 86. So yeah, that's what this does. I hope you guys understood what I was doing. Rate, comment, subscribe. Um, yeah, so after when you subtracted do all this stuff. Yeah. I'll check you guys later. This is a very long problem, but it wasn't that as, it's not as complicated as what you think it is. It's just like big integer. So yeah. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.